Hi everyone, you're saving on Olive's Ark, and today I'm finally going to do the care video for the Gastrophilus Prisina, aka Killbelly Lizards. Hi everyone, so today I'm finally going to do that care video that I think has been somewhat anticipated as I uh, set up the enclosure for these guys. I then did an unboxing and then I did a, a relaxing little montage of the kill belly lizards. And today I want to go over care with you guys because I think it's due time. And now that I've had them a few months, I think I feel comfortable enough to give a proper care video. But if you haven't seen it, I will link down in the description below the build for this cage as well as the unboxing and the relaxing footage just in case you think these guys are pretty cool but if you don't know what a keel belly lizard is I'll overlay some footage right now uh, but basically what they are is they are uh, in the lizarded family which is basically uh, a lizard is the best way I can explain it so they are just a little simple kind of lizard they stay fairly small only around 12 to 14 inches and that includes their tail which makes up over half that that length uh, but they're really cool animals. So just keep in mind, these are a small lizard, which means they tend to be on the fly to your side. Since these are kind of small um, and, and fast and agile, they're gonna behave that way if you try to hold them. So these are not a holding species, although you are able to tame them down, they will come out onto your hand, but you can't really like grab and like pet them like you would a leopard gecko. So let's get started. The scientific name or the Latin name for a reptile is the name you should always use when looking up an animal, when buying an animal, when researching an animal. And the reason is, even though the common name is easier to remember, easier to say generally, but many animals, not just reptiles, have multiple common names. And so sometimes, uh, uh, they also will share a common name with another animal that's different. Like if, it's a, if I just say keelbelly lizards, that can mean a lot of different things. But if I say Gastrophilus prasina, that's just these guys. And I know exactly what you mean. So this is their enclosure. Um, I made a whole video where I showed how I built this. And when I built it, I also talked about why I was placing certain things where. So part of the care is I would actually watch the video where I build this so you see why I'm doing things the way I do. So I forget the size of this, but because this is a custom built enclosure, um, it's not in the normal range. I think it's 24 across, 18 deep, 36 high. The most general size you're gonna see, the minimum, is 18 by 18 by 36. Um, Zoomed actually makes a paludarium in this size. So you want the minimum cage for two of these guys. Um, you can actually have two and you can house them together as long as it's either a male and a female or two females. But you're able to house these together in pairs. And uh, if you do that, 18 by 18 by 36 will happily house two lizards, which is what I have in here. And if you go bigger naturally and you still only keep two lizards, that's fine because these guys are very, very active. They utilize all space. And so something I want to mention is once you get the appropriate size, again, minimum 18 by 18 by 36, when you get the appropriate size and you build it, you want to make sure the sides are covered in something climbable. So either a cocoa fiber liner, um, cork tiles, cork bark. You can make a custom background where you foam it up and carve out ledges and such. But do not leave your cage glass. Um, even wood, even though it's not a smooth surface, they can't really climb wood um, that well. They need something with a little more grip. So whatever cage you end up getting or making or designing, Please fill at least two at the sides. I would do all three, honestly. Fill the sides with climbable materials because they will utilize it. These guys love to climb. And once you have your enclosure picked out and maybe you've scaped it a little bit, now you wanna maintain proper temperature and humidity. And so these guys are native to places like Tanzania, Zanzibar, Kenya, places like that. And all of these places, what they have in common, they have kind of cool rainforest systems. So what that means is these guys do tend to like it a little more on the humid side and on the little bit of a cooler side. But because they're a lizarded, a lizard, um, they do enjoy basking spots and heat and uh, kind of a range to choose from. So I'm gonna be talking in Fahrenheit here and the ideal temperature that I found when researching online is everybody kind of cohesively says that the ideal temperature for these guys ambient wise, which means the overall tank temperature is between 78 and 82 degrees with a basking spot of 89. And I like having a little bit of a wider range. So I have my temperature gun. Uh, 
which is very important. If you are a reptile keeper and you don't have one of these, you should get one. But basically it's digital and you can point it at any spot and it will tell you the readout of what the temperature is specifically at that place. So here I'm going to start down and work my way up. It's 76 degrees. And that's good because even though it's a bit on the lower end of where it said 78 being like perfectly ideal, 76 is actually great. I tend to go between 75 and 85 as like my range. Um, so down here it's a lot cooler, but that's fine because the plants are down here, the water dish is down here. It's naturally going to be cooler. So let's work our way up a little bit more. It's 82. And so that's perfect because my range now, as you can see, is 76 to 82. And that's a really great range. That's what you want, which is why you do notice you want a taller tank more versus a wider tank. You want something with plenty of height because that's what they're going to utilize. So you can see right now he's up there under the basking spot. If it was too hot, he wouldn't go there. And also if he does get too hot or he is too warm, he can move out to more of the side of it. He can go, you know, back into a hide where it's cooler. He can work his way down further into the cage. So it's just important to provide a gradient. Now onto the humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor you kind of have in the air. So this just means that uh, if I were to never miss this and just kind of let it dry out, it would become very desert-like, very dry. So because this is a rainforest type of dwelling animal, and based on the locations you can find it, there is a lot of rain. There's a very heavy like rain monsoon season in these locations. And so this does need to stay a little more moist than normal. Ideal humidity in general is like 60 to 70 percent okay a normal house at least for me I find my house usually stays around 40 to 50 depending on the season and the weather and things like that in general I try to keep this in the 60 percent range but every so often every couple days I'll really like drench the cage just to boost up the humidity to maybe like the 80s so it's just an occasional boost it keeps things like on normal weather patterns and cycles and there are rainy seasons versus dry seasons Next, let's talk about lighting. Two lights. One is the UVB uh, tube light and the other is a heat basking light. You do need both of these bulbs if you're going to be keeping Gastrophilus piscina because they need both heat and sunlight essentially. So that's what the UVB is acting as. If you are not familiar with UV bulbs, they act as a sun. So if you're keeping your Gastrophilus Prisina inside, you will need a UV bulb. What I do is I buy the tropical version of UVB tube lights. Uh, so most brands will have a desert and a tropical version. Usually it'll be called the tropical, sometimes it's also called like the 25 tube or a 2.5 tube, something like that. So you want the tropical version of the tube. And then the second bulb that was also up there was that tiny little heat bulb. The one I get is this nano basking spot from Zoomed. It's really tiny, it's a 40 watt bulb. Um, you can even see how small the box is. And the reason my light's so tiny is because my, my natural ambient house temperature is usually in the higher 70s. I usually keep my house around 77 to 78 because I have so many reptiles and it's easier to just keep the house a little warmer. But um, with my house being a little warmer, I don't need a high powered basking light because then I would be getting extreme temperatures up top. So I just need a little boost in light. This just adds another like 10 degrees to the ambient temperature. Next is feeding these guys. So this is something that people are still discovering and kind of learning about, but what I found is they mostly are insectivores. So hands down, if you only feed them insects for their lifetime, they are going to be healthy, happy lizards. Um, mine love roaches more than any other food. Uh, crickets are their second favorite. Some other interesting insects that mine will also eat are snail worms and flies, like larger flies, not fruit flies. Make sure you always dust them with a calcium powder and a vitamin powder on a rotating basis. I feed mine personally every third day because I feed really big meals when they do eat so I found every three days is what keeps them healthiest and happiest and I do keep a uh, Pangea crested gecko diet on um, availability in between those days so I'll, I'll put in a little bit in between the every third day so maybe every other day I'm putting in a little of that because it's very sweet but they do love it. You are able to feed them crested gecko diet, but that should not be their staple. It's too sweet. It is not designed for them, but it's a nice supplement in between. And because crested gecko diet does contain vitamins and calcium and things like that, I like to 
give that to them as a supplement. Uh, other fun things you can feed them. So these are just for fun. This is not a staple in any way, but it's stuff that I'm discovering they like to eat. So funnily enough, they like sweet things. So um, I will feed mine little apple and banana bits on occasion. Another thing they like to eat that's not so sweet is sometimes I'll chop up um, like romaine lettuce or arugula, really tiny, and I'll put that in there. But they do eat quite a variety of things, so they could be considered omnivorous. You could feed an omnivorous diet. The more variety, the better, but primary, always, 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 you should feed staple of insects. All right, so I think I'm actually done here. Uh, if I left off any care tips or advice that you needed answering, go ahead and drop a comment below and I will answer people there. Um, and I'm also not opposed to doing a part two to this video. To reiterate, just the overall perfect checklist to make sure you have everything to start off your gastrophilus piscina as happy and healthy as possible is you want to make sure you have the appropriate tank size. You want to make sure the temperature and the humidity are always in the right ranges. And remember, just because I'm listing the perfect temperature right now on the screen does not mean you have to stick within that range. A couple degrees off is always okay. You want to make sure you feed a proper diet, primarily of insects, but you can supplement with other fun foods as well, like apple and Pangea diet and veggies. You should definitely have a UVB light as well as a small basking light, and your basking light is going to depend on the temperature of your house. If you keep your house at a colder temperature, you might need a larger light, but if your te house stays at a warmer temperature, you can get a smaller light, and if your house temperature changes seasonally, you can always get a thermostat to help control your lighting, or you can switch out bulbs as the seasons change. And my last bit of advice is to just love your Gastrophilus persina. They're actually a fairly easy to keep lizard for being something that's uncommonly kept. Um, I don't see them any harder to keep than like a bearded dragon or a leopard gecko would be. All, the, all reptiles take some bit of knowledge to keep into care and as long as you're willing to provide these things for them, they're, they're all easy to keep in my opinion. Um, but always do your research and never buy an animal before you know what you're doing and that you're actually ready. So that's it guys. Um, I'll leave you off with my little, little friend here and I will see you next Friday. Bye.